exactly the same. For all graphs doing graph sine, cosine, and tangent, actually, you know what? You're in luck. I'll actually do two of them because I'll do a cosine one as well for you. Um, so anyways, to graph sine, though, the process is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to ask you guys to find the amplitude, the period, the x scale. And then if there's any transformations, right? So the transformations, we go as phase shift. And um, I'll do vertical transformations over here. Are we going to be shifting the graph up or down, left or right, or anything like that? All right. So we need to be able to find all this information, all of it, before we even start graphing. So let's go back and then remember what, was our, what is our parent function of the sine, or at least our transformation. A times sine of bx minus c plus d. All right? So the amplitude is the absolute value of A. So we look at our A, which is 2. So it's the absolute value of 2, which is just equal to 2. OK? So we got our amplitude. That's going to be the half distance of the highest point and the lowest point of our graph. Um, then we go to period. Remember, period is 2 pi divided by B. So we need to say, well, what is our B? Two. Now, be careful. x over 2, is that the same thing as 1 half times x? Yes. No. Yeah. Well, what happens if you multiply x times 1 half? It's x over 2, right? So therefore, what am I multiplying my x by when I have x over 2? 1 half. One half. So therefore, this is 2 pi divided by 1 half. So remember, when solving a problem like this, multiply by the reciprocal on the top and bottom, and we end up just getting 4 pi. So now my period is not 2 pi, it's 4 pi. Yes? Well, if I was going to say 1 half times x, right? I could change x into a fraction, oh, I'm sorry, times x over 1, right? This is all the same thing. Multiply across, this is 1 times x over 2 times 1. Well, that just equals x over 2. So it's the exact same thing. It's just a different way to write it. Um, so now, so I know this is kind of a little tight in here, but does everybody see how I got 4x? Does anybody have questions on that? Or sorry, 4 pi. I know I kind of wrote it in the type, but everybody understands? I'll write it out bigger. Never mind, I got it. OK. Hello, Ms. Michael. Hi. Um, yeah. I have a girl in my class right now who has a unit three test. I don't know if you gave her a test. It's take home. Carla? Oh, yeah. No, she should not. Let me, uh, I don't know what I'm She should not have a test for any reason. Yes, that would be great. Thank you very much. Um, so 2 pi divided by 1 half, and then we multiply by 2 over 1 times 2 over 1. That multiplies the 1, and we're just left with 4 pi. OK? Everybody cool with that? All right. So now let's go to the x scale. The x scale is you take your period divided by, I'm sorry, you take your period and divide it by 4. Well, our period is 4 pi divided by 4, so therefore we just have pi. Right? OK. Um, now, we didn't talk about phase shift yet. And phase shift is going to kind of affect a little bit of how we're going to get into. I know a lot of you guys will say, oh, well, phase shift is going to be shift pi over 4. Right? It makes sense. That's what we did before. But there's a couple things you guys need to understand about our phase shift. Our phase shift is affected by our period. So to determine our phase shift, what we're going to want to do is take bx minus c and set it equal to 0. That's actually going to tell us how much how we're going to change it. All right. So if we take our phase shift and we set this equal to 0, that's actually going to affect where what our, actually our phase shift is going to move over. So what I'll do here is I'll take, uh, so I'll have x over 2 minus pi over 4 equals 0. All right, so again, it gets a little tricky, but yeah, we'll just go through it. So if I add pi over 4 on both sides, 
I have x over 2 equals pi over 4. Then to get, have x over 2 to solve for that, I multiply by 2 on both sides. And therefore, I have x equals pi halves. Okay, So my phase shift, ladies and gentlemen, is actually pi halves. It's not pi over 4. It's pi halves. A lot of students make this mistake. When you guys are doing your phase shift, make sure you always take, include your b if there is one, bx minus c, set it equal to 0, and that's how you find your phase shift. What if there's not? If there's no b, your phase shift would just be this. Like, watch. What if my phase shift was just, what if it was just x over pi over 4? If it was just x minus pi over 4, well, what would the phase shift be? Just pi, just pi over 4, right? But when you have a b, since that affects your period, it affects your phase shift, OK? So we look for that b. If there's a b, do not just assume it's pi, do not just think it's pi over 4. And then let's go over our vertical translation. Do we have any, anything shifting up and down? No. no. OK. So we can just write none. All right, so now let's go and graph this. And when you guys are graphing, what you're going to do is you're going to include two periods. You can include two positive periods, or you can include a positive and a negative period, or two negative periods. I really don't care what you want to do. Um, you can choose this. For this example, I'll do a positive period, and I'll do a negative period. Okay. So in this case, what we're going to do is we know our amplitude is 2. Amplitude, remember, is that half distance. So we're going to go up to 2, and we're going to go down to 2. All right? 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so I take care of the amplitude first. The next thing, let's look at our x scale. What is our x scale? Our x scale is pi, right? So that means all of my important points, my maximum, my minimum, my x-intercept, are all pi distance away from each other. Okay? That's you remember how guys I have like that main essential thing I try to repeat all the time? This is the main thing that you guys need to understand. When you have your x scale, that is the distance of your important points. Pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Right? And I'm going to do the negative direction. So this would be negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi. All right? So now what I like to do when I'm graphing, just like when I graph exponential logarithmics, I like to graph the parent function first. And then I like to graph the transformation. Okay? So the parent graph looks exactly like the sine of x. There's a couple differences. First thing, remember, we always start at 0, 0 for sine, unless there's going to be for the parent graph. It goes up to the maximum, hits the x-intercept, goes down to the minimum, and then goes back up. And I'm just going to leave this dotted, because remember, this is the parent graph. This is not actually going to be my graph. Every time it's you, well, you don't have to. But I'm trying to understand. I know that this is what the graph looks like, right? When I, did the, when I did that previous video, that's what the graph looked like. So now I have this graph. But now, and do we notice, do you guys notice how the period, this graph repeats at 4 pi, right? It's going to keep on repeating at 4 pi. It's gone back to its original um, starting point at 4 pi. So now we have a phase shift, though, right? This graph is being shifted. And so we look at the phase shift. The graph is being shifted how far, Courtney? It's going pi, over pi, how far over, though? How far? What is our phase shift? No. The phase shift is pi over 2. Pi over 2. Well, from here to here is pi. So therefore, we could say from here to here is pi halves. Right? Now, it gets a little bit difficult. But notice, what is going to be the distance between my next important point? What was that x scale again? Uh, your phone needs to be put away. No, put it on your desk, face down. No more phone out. If you need a calculator, you need to get one. Pi halves. Three pi halves, right? Because why does it have to be? Why is it between? What do you know? What is that distance? What is the distance between pi halves and three pi halves? Pi. And what is pi? What is that pi? Why, why do we know it's pi? Because pi is our what? Scale. Our x scale. All right. So you guys have to know that's always going to be your x scale. So then, if that's three pi halves, the next one would be four, that's five, pi five pi halves. 
seven pi halves, nine pi halves. Okay? So now, guys, our points, and this one, then we can just do it in the negative direction. Okay? So now let's just go ahead and graph. So instead of that pi, I now have my point at pi halves. Instead of it intersecting at 2 pi, it now intersects at 3 pi. Instead of having the minimum at um, 3 pi, it now has the minimum at negative 5 pi over 2. And then it comes up, and then it goes or crosses, and then it goes up. And then the same thing here. Instead of intersecting at 0, now it intersects at negative pi halves, goes down to 3 pi, up, and up. Okay, so there you go. That's how you graph it.